Hi, I'm Mark Jardine, Managing Editor of SailWorld.com and YachtsAndYachting.com. And today I'm talking to Suzanne Blorston, who is the CEO of Barton Marine, who are looking to expand into the USA. So Suzanne, welcome. Really good to speak to you. Thanks, Mark. Great to be with you and see you again. So what are Barton doing in the USA and what is happening? Well, it's probably the biggest expansion program Barton has ever had. And Barton's been here since 1948. So uh, that is a statement to say that. We've decided that we are going to move into the United States and expand our line there in a very big way. So we've incorporated our own company. We now have Barton US. We have um, created a warehouse uh, logistics program with Rooster Sailing here in the UK. So together we're creating a logistics program in a warehouse in Virginia. And then we've hired probably the A team of sales representatives in the United States on the East Coast to represent the Barton line. They're as excited about having the line as we are. All of them are sailors. These guys know our product line anyway, and they're excited to have it in the range that they can start selling it. And they're called Atlantic Marketing. And uh, they're uh, working very close with us to present these products throughout the United States. And then we also have hired a social media organization uh, that's working with us now, along with our, uh, our, our global uh, media program, so that we'll have a lot of input into the USA immediately as soon as we launch in October. And then we have a new Barton catalog that's specific for the United States that we've invested in. And we've made sure that it, we take out all the, the metric and we've put in all of the uh, imperial uh, measurements and guides. And then uh, we've also created a dedicated member of our staff to handle the U.S. market because the globe is getting bigger for us. And so we really need a specific person who's going to work with the business development there. So we've done everything we can to make this a success. We've decided we, we've been in the United States for many, many decades, but um, in a small way. And we really have decided we're going to take the full range now and support the market. Now, on the face of it looking at the timing some people may question why so what has been the inspiration about expanding into the usa now i i, I don't know when the time is best to make an expansion program happen mark uh, all i know is that we feel there's a gap in the u.s market that we can fill and that is uh, to bring in a, a a product that has great value, great quality, great performance and sleek styling and create a place for ourselves that we can prove uh, response to the market from dinghies all the way up to 50 foot sailing yachts. And uh, the times that we go to the United States and, and look at the channelries and look at the marine stores, we don't think the US sailors have a lot of choice. We walk into some of those stores and they have two, maybe three different brands that people can choose from. And often those displays are rather weak. So we feel that if we can bring our whole range over so that from the very beginning of, uh, uh, of, of rigging a boat to all of the cars and uh, extrusions and uh, gear that, and equipment that you place on the deck, if we can provide all of that, then people have a one-stop shop. And they have another choice. And, and America deserves another choice in, in, in marine gear. And what differences are there in your approach to the USA market compared to how you approach the rest of the world? Well, we have incorporated there and put a company there. But that is because we feel that the market is so diverse and so big. Uh, we know that doing it the way that we've done it, which is with a satellite office and a satellite organization, um, has kept us from really being able to um, create a large presence in the United States. So um, I think what sets us apart there is that we've, we've decided to invest in, in the program in a big way and, and create a big presence. Uh, we'll start on the East Coast and then move to the West Coast. And, uh, and, and that's probably what has set us apart from our other distribution networks. I guess what, what sets us apart in the United States is we're very proud of the fact that we are a UK supplier and a UK manufacturer. We make everything in our factory. So we have total control of our raw materials, 
our production, manufacturing, our assembly. We have total control of our quality control so that when we create a product and we put that product out the door, we have every confidence that people are gonna be happy and use that product for years and years to come. We don't have a lot of returns at Barton Marine and that's because we have engineers here that are sailors and make products for sailors. And I think that that's something that we can use in the United States as, as, a, new, as a new thought process. We, we, control, we control our product line from the beginning to, to being on their boat as equipment. And you mentioned just a little earlier about the diversity of the range that you have at Barton. And do you think this is one of the aspects that will make Barton successful in the USA marketplace? Without a doubt, without a doubt. We, we, if you come to, to a, a Barton Marine display stand and you find that you can get products for your dinghy as well as your cruising boat, if you can get the traveler cars you need, if you can get the quality that you want at a great value, if you can find all the blocks that you need from um, you know, the, the blocks that are traditional blocks to the uh, high load eyes that are so, uh, so uh, popular, if you can get all of that in one place, and then find the accessories you need, such as furlers and winchers and, and winches themselves. And you can find all of that in one section and one producer with a sleek styling that matches. I think then, yeah, I think that's important. The diversity is important. Plus we have continual R&D, Mark, as you well know. We have the, you know, we're constantly bringing out new product lines, like our, our main sheet, uh, uh, removable main sheet. Uh, system. You know, there's no one else in the world that makes it and it allows a cruising boat to uh, have a lot more room when they're in dock. They can remove the main sheet traveler and they can uh, get it out of the way so they can enjoy their time on the boat and then put it back in place and sail on. So there's products like that that we can't, they can't find anywhere else and we're, we're thrilled that they're part of our range and we can create a full range of products there. Well, having been to various boat shows and seen you on the stands, I'm always amazed by just the range of products. And then when you look at different classes, all the way from a cruising yacht, you see the Barton product ranges on there. And then on the international moths, you see your high load thimbles on, on the international moths. And so you are covering off a huge range. So I'm, I'm not surprised to hear that that you see as one of the big advantages. Now, with operations, how have you had to adapt those to deliver this project so successfully? Well, we've had, I think one of the most important things we've done is create a U.S. catalog so that it's specific to the U.S. market. It has the measurements that people understand. Uh, they don't have to try and find a graft and a conversion chart to understand uh, the metric to the, uh, the imperial measurements. Um, we've had to change operations in terms of just setting up a warehouse uh, to go over to the United States. We, um, because of the situation we're in in 2020, we couldn't do a lot of traveling. So what we had to do is set up the entire U.S. warehouse in our warehouse and then shrink wrap it on pallets and send it over with the bins already labeled, full of product, um, barcoded, and, and, and ready to go so that when they arrive in America, when they arrived and they're already there, when they arrived in America, they could just go straight into the warehouse and the warehouse existed. And that, that was a feat in itself. And um, I give a lot of credit to our guys in the factory who put it all together for us. So in terms of operations, we've had to, you know, we've had to maneuver around the times anyway that have been a challenge. But we've also added someone to our, our, our staff, Kim Foster is going to handle the US uh, presence for us there and the representation. And we did that because we are already handling a global market with our sales team here. And we didn't want anything to, to slip through or anybody to not feel they were still getting uh, exceptional service. So we've had a designated person come in for the US market. And we've also, We've also put in a new software system to handle the US market separately from our own that is cloud-based. 
So anybody in the United States can get on there and, and, and see our product lines as well as anybody here. So we can administrate in both places and that's really a fail safe program we've established so that we, we, can, um, we can monitor and, and make a smooth transition uh, with all the customers that we currently have in the United States and all the ones we wanna bring on. So with logistics and processes, it's a huge operation, but also setting up a standalone business in the USA, that's gotta be challenging. It was challenging, especially because we've had to do it all virtually. We had planned to go over and every single ticket we purchased was canceled. So we've, we've had to do everything uh, virtually, which is everything from the legal aspect of creating a company to finding a bank, which was the hardest thing we did is to get someone to give us a bank account only because we couldn't be there in person and the United States requires that. Um, but we finally established a bank. We, um, we did all of our warehouse tours virtually until we chose one. We're working very closely with Rooster sailing here in the UK for all of our logistics issues. And we're all very excited. It's, it's working well for all of us. And uh, so it has, been, it has been a challenge. And, and I should also tell you, it's in a, very, a very expensive challenge. It's probably one of the biggest budget items we've ever had, but we have to do it right. And we have to do it big. We have to go in, we have to let people know that we're there in a big way and that we're there to stay. So we had to do it in the way we did it because we, we, we have to you know, make the grassroots sailors know that we're also grassroots. And yeah, without doubt, this is a challenge to do, but you've said it's exciting. What do you say is the most satisfying aspect of the project for you so far? Well, I'll be a little personal. I'm an American and I run a British company in the sailing world. So I'm very lucky. I've been here 25 years. I have two homes. I now get to call both homes, you know, Barton territory. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm personally very excited about bringing the product home to where I was raised and where I grew up and went to school. So um, I, I'm kind of personally excited about that. But also Barton has a history of being an, uh, an exporting company. Ron Barton started this company, who was an engineer, started this company in 1948. And by 1950, he was all, already an exporter, exporting to Europe. And the first leisure marine equipment uh, producer exporting to Europe. And we have never stopped. When David Coleman owned the company, he did the same thing. In fact, there's still an award today that's the Export Award, uh, the David Coleman Export Award. And um, so Barton's been known for its exporting excellence since the 1950s. So this really just falls in place. Instead of doing it in a, in a way that, that it is smaller or, or just provides accessories, instead we're going in and we're gonna do it big and we're gonna do it right. And we're gonna to add to our expansion program. And realize, Mark, anything that we do to expand Barton Marine and the brand globally, it helps all our customers worldwide because then they know all these products are available worldwide. And if we do it well with the, with, in America, it will have a, a domino effect and create bigger markets in all of our, our global markets. We're in 35 countries now. And all of them will benefit from the social media, the advertising, and the brand value that we're, um, that we're pushing forward and expanding with. So it's the combination really of bringing Barton home for yourself personally, but also continuing the traditions of Barton as an exporting company. Well, fantastic, and especially in these times to be able to do that. So, the timing, Mark, the, ti <laughs> the timing wasn't, we, we, we planned to do this expansion before we knew we were going to be in the middle of the most uh, challenging pandemic that the world will ever know. And we, uh, we had a choice to stop or to go forward and we chose to go forward. So um, I think you know, there's always gonna be reasons not to go forward. There's always gonna be risk factors, but uh, the plan was there, the goal was there and we've kept to it but often the best things happen at times of adversity. So I'd say a very good reason to carry on. That's true. <laughs> now, again, you mentioned earlier, everything in USA is imperial, yet 
all of the ranges, when you look at any of the boat shows, everything is measured metric. So what do you have to do there so that you can change things to an imperial system? Uh, it, it was very challenging. And I, I appreciate the fact that our global sales manager, Christian Brewer, actually took that challenge on. Um, you just have to work very closely with conversion charts and then measure again and measure again to make sure that we're getting as close to inches and pounds instead of grams and, and men, mills as you can. Um, we have both listed in the U.S. catalog. So someone who's looking at our U.S. catalog now will be able to see both measurement programs. So it gives them a value in terms of the metric system as well as the imperial system in America. But it was a big challenge. We, we had to proofread uh, the U.S. version of the catalog about 25 times to catch all the mistakes and, and clear them up. But, um, but it's just, it's what you have to do. And, and I, 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 think that, I think that our customers will be appreciative that we have gone to that extent so that there's a good rationale behind, behind moving over to the U.S. with, with metric products. And how will this change impact both the trade itself and boat owners in the USA? Well, again, I'm going to go back to that word choice. I think it's important that, that customers have a choice, that they can see designs that are different, they can see performance values that are different, and they can choose where they want to put their time and their money and their, their maintenance programs for their boats. Um, for the trade, it can't be anything but good. Anytime that a, 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 a store has an opportunity, a dealer has an opportunity to create a bigger uh, assortment of products, a bigger uh, presentation of products, it's always good. It, it, it's always an exceptional thing for the trade to present something new and to have new ideas, to, to bring new breath and, and new life into uh, the equipment section of their store. I just have to believe that it's a good thing for them. And doing this as a businesswoman, you must have learned a huge amount along the way. What do you think you could share with other businesses who may be looking to do the same sort of thing? Well, uh, ring fence a lot of money. <laughs> and um, get yourself a very good crew of people because um, I sure didn't do this on my own. I, I, think, I think I was the passion behind it perhaps, but um, we have such a good crew of people at Barton Marine, all of whom are so excited to grow the market. And especially in such a challenging economic time, the fact that we're growing, we've had our best year ever last year, we're about to go you know, finish off another year, uh, this year has been a little challenging, but we're still up at the top of our game. And um, I would just say, surround yourself with the best people and people who share your passion to grow and expand and understand that that's the lifeblood of any manufacturer is to grow and expand and to get more interest and passion in your line. So those are probably the two things, have lots of money and have really good people. Well, I've known one of your team, Christian Brewer, for 44 years so, um, and sailed with him for many. So I know you're surrounded by a good team. So I fully understand. Yeah, get, get a good crew around you is absolutely key. And have you received or is there available any assistance from UK trade organizations for companies looking to expand overseas? You know, there are, the, the DIT has been exceptional, and I have a special representative from the DIT. In fact, the new chair of the DIT came to visit us here at Barton Marine because he knew that we were actively involved in expansion programs. Um, the DIT works from March, uh, March 31st, uh, their new year starts April 1st, and we received um, funding from the DIT in the form of grants for our operation when we initiated at the first of the year. But then it all fell through the first of the year because we used those grants, it was travel grants, and, and we used those grants to buy tickets and, uh, and support our trips over to the US. And of course, they've all been canceled. 
And then the grant money itself disappeared because we weren't able to use it before the end of their financial year. So we're working again with the DIT to see if they can supply us with other grants. There, there's lots of grants available for specific things, but when, you, when you're working with a specific market, you need to find specific help. And for IT, there's, there's grants for IT help, uh, which, we're, which we are taking advantage of. Um, but uh, most of the expansion grants are so that you have the income to go over to that market and explore it and, and, and start and initiate re relationships. And I'm afraid that uh, this year, those, those plans didn't happen. Not but exactly possible at the moment. Now, no, that was part of our challenge, but, but we overcame it and kept going. <laughs> And Suzanne, this is imminent now, the um, actual launch date. When are you actually officially launching in the USA? October 1st, a few days from now. We're going to be, um, we're going to go live um, with uh, the website. The website's live now, but the order entry is live October 1st, and that's when we go live. And our Atlantic marketing team in the U.S. has been exceptional. We've already had lots of meetings with customers there and we uh, they're already touring in their uh, trade show event and they can't bring anybody into an event so instead they're touring and they have a big trailer that they put all of their suppliers in and Bart Marine is featured as their new supplier. So we've had lots of interest throughout the, the East Coast already with new customers seeing Barton's line in full for the first time and they are and, and there's a lot of excitement and I'm 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 thrilled to tell you that a lot of it is for the classic boat owners too because of our wooden block range. So apparently in America, we, um, we're gonna make a big statement pretty quickly with the wooden block range as well as our traditional um, uh, um, range of blocks that we're so well known for. Well, Suzanne, a hugely exciting time for Barton and superb to see a UK company expanding in this way especially during this time so it says many thanks indeed for your time and really looking forward to seeing the future of barton in the usa we'll stay in touch mark we'll let you know how we do fantastic Great. thanks bye